Good morning. Uh, thank you for having me here today. Uh, I'm so impressed with uh, the presentation by my sister, Ambassador, because the issues are so central and the same that we can almost go straight into the Q&A. Because I'll repeat exactly what she has said. Exactly that. To emphasize how important they are and how they are just the same issues over and over again. However, what I'll do basically is to focus much more on the region where I, I come from. What has been defined in different ways. Some call it uh, the Horn of Africa. Some call it the Greater Horn of Africa. Some call it the EAC. Some call it IGAD. All showing how different actors and players find their space within these challenges. Specifically, I want to talk about uh, IGAD. And the current IGAD was formed in 1996 by the countries of the Eastern African region. Mainly seven countries came together. And these were Kenya, Uganda, Somalia, Ethiopia, South Sudan, we joined later, Sudan, Djibouti, and um, Eritrea. Uh, as we talk today, Eritrea has been suspended from this entity for some, for some reasons. Now, why, were, why, why, why did they come together at the time? They came together because of recurring drought and natural disasters, which were quite a problem uh, and which caused widespread famine, ecological degradation, and economic hardships. And they all tried to handle these issues independently, but it was very hard. That's what they say, let's come together and find a common way of addressing these common problems. And over time, they've been able to address recurring issues. So that today, the key focus is CVE and counterterrorism. What are the challenges facing the area today? What you'll find is um, devastating conflicts, inter-state wars, civil wars, and inter-communal conflicts. We have economic crisis, poverty, chronic food insecurity, and frequent cycles of famine. And then most importantly and lastly, environmental degradation. Common, common issues affecting these countries. With that then, you realize that terrorism will find a very good footing and a very good presence to bring its ugly face and hold on for quite some time unless common strategies are developed to address um, this uh, uh, problem. All these countries, in fact, almost all of them, have seen acts of terrorism, of course, to different degrees. Kenya has seen it, Uganda has seen it, Tanzania has seen it, you know, Ethiopia has seen it to different degrees. And therefore, again, re-emphasizing the importance of collective action uh, to address this problem. In fact, I'm being reminded that uh, for us in uh, Nairobi and uh, Dar es Salaam, in fact, uh, last Wednesday, was the 21st anniversary of the 7th August attack on Nairobi and US embassies in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam. Just to emphasize how bad things have been in that region. Out of this then, IGAD has been forced to address issues of terrorism, CVE, and counterterrorism. And they have done two key actions in this regard. I'll bet very little, but at least helping to address the situation. First, what the IGA did was the um, establishment and inauguration of a sub-regional center for prevention and countering of violent extremism last year in Djibouti. And this was formed a bit earlier, but it was dormant, but last year it became very active in addressing the issues of the region. The purpose then was to coordinate research and state efforts against violent extremism and terrorism in the eastern African sub-region. Out of this came what we now call the IGAD Center of Excellence on CVE and Counterterrorism. It is indeed a premier institution that's offering a dedicated platform to institutionalize the prevention and countering of violent extremism uh, in the region. What then are the um, strategies or strengths of IGAD in terms of addressing this key problem, together with other RECs in the region. One is they provide a legal framework and emphasize the issue of the respect for human rights and international law. Now you'll find that in Africa, all the actions that are taken normally 
are hard actions. And human rights issues come at the core of these problems. We have not, we have not been able to address issues very, in a comfortable way. Whatever we do has a major inf impact on the population. Now, these strategies also emphasize on economic and social development, which capture, captures other foundational vulnerabilities apart from ideology and religion. Again, remember, where there's poverty, then these issues will arise. And therefore, the first strategy is to address issues to do with that. Then the issue of not acting alone and interstate cooperation with attempts at institutional coordination of interstate cooperation and anti-terrorism. Uh, fourth is understanding what the issues are. And this calls for the centrality of strategic research in informing PCVE and CT strategies. And then lastly, of course, the fact that we are very reactive as opposed to uh, proactive. And we're calling for and emphasizing on the issue of early warning and quick responses. In fact, unfortunately, all our actions in the past have been reactive. Have we done the element of early warning, real early warning, we'll be able to overcome part of these challenges that we face today. That being the strength, what are the challenges then? One is weak enforcement mechanisms. As a wreck, it's very hard to enforce such actions. At the end of the day, the actions remain with independent nation states. If they do nothing, you can't push them. And that has remained a challenge. You come up with very good issues, very good programs, but you don't get very far at the end of it all. Then there's the issue of poor CV strategies implementation by member countries. As we said earlier, you have these good programs, but when you have an attack in a country, the countries respond with hard actions, which again, if anything, push the community away from the government and those programs that are good in addressing these problems. Third is inadequate financial commitment by African states to anti, the anti-terrorism fund, both at the, at the REC level and the AU level. We have not shown serious commitment to this to address these problems. I mentioned earlier about weak early warning and quick response capability. Uh, Ambassador mentioned about technology. For us, the problem is low investment in technology and scientific research able to combating CVE and, and, and terrorism. And then the fact that, I don't know why, this is unique for Africa, that we have so many CBOs coming up to address these problems. And the challenge they face is why there are so many. The support for them from the governments is quite challenging. And therefore, you see little actions from little players that don't have much effect on, uh, on the ground. I mentioned the issue about three or four entities operating in theatre, and that caused the problem of risks, uh, risks which are bound around uh, coordination due to parallel mandates, command, and competing regional interests of respective contributing states or the rest themselves. I will then maybe just jump straight into what I think are my recommendations, strategies, uh, and the way forward. And that partly, of course, the ambassador has touched on this also. To remain adaptive and nimble, we need to think of certain actions that need to be done. One, as I mentioned earlier, is investing in research and technology. That we have no option. We find out better ways of getting to know what's happening, getting the information, being ahead of the game, and ensure that we control what is going on. Then the other point will be operationalizing the African peace and security architecture and establishing, which we have done partly, regional standby forces and developing the capacity for early warning and rapid response. I know we all have standby forces with our, in, our, in our regions, just to give them much more strength and make them more uh, effective. The ambassador put very well the element of prevention. She put it so well. <laughs> so I need, to, I need to emphasize on preventive strategies to address root causes and sustainably combat CVE and terrorism. In fact, what you call the underlying causes, which we all know, and which in certain instances, we have failed to give due uh, attention. 
then the other point will be augmenting interstate cooperation in intelligence gathering, extraterritorial investigations and extradition, technical training and research, and emphasizing much more on regional integration, acting together all as players on a common platform. Uh, the next point, again, where we are better victims is ensuring good governance. For greater political accountability, human rights, plurality, social and economic development. When you go back to the pull and push factors, you'll find for us, they are so clear. In fact, our issues lie very much on issues of governance, human rights, core issues that we need to address uh, seriously. And then uh, I'll say lastly, uh, fast tracking the implementation of the regional AU EGAD PCVE uh, strategies, which are, which are actually uh, ongoing. I will conclude there and allow maybe time for questions. We can have exchanges and uh, learn from each other. Thank you very much, uh, Anwar.